guys. <laughs> Not much of an intro here, just to say hi. Um, not quite sure how this is going to go actually. I'm starting it off and the temperature in here is getting totally stupid. We've got about, I don't know, three or four days on the trot with uh, extreme heat, which as you know doesn't suit me. I think, I think my glistening arm may prove what it's like. And mind you, that's because I've just been outside as well, but uh, it's too hot to do much in here for very long. So anyway, what this is about is um, this is a compound belongs to Lawrence Harrison. Oh, I think he's almost in the middle of moving, but uh, he wanted me to look at it because he's getting a problem, and I still forget the name of his darn lathe. He's got a problem where he feels he's turning a bit of taper when he shouldn't, although in theory you'd think that's all down to tailstock. Uh, but the other thing is uh, he gets the impression he's turning out of round uh, and that's hard to grasp really but he suspects the compound may have a problem he sent it to me uh, I've no idea where this will go really all I can do is to check this out in various ways and see if I can find uh, discrepancies and then see where we go from there now the underneath it's got a one inch integral peg, shall we call it, and that registers in the uh, cross slide for, for his lathe. So I want to put that on something, I haven't got a big surface plate and I haven't got anything really handy other than, if I change the camera I'll show you what I'm thinking of. Sorry if the camera moves a bit, it's uh, not in the best stable position at the moment. Anyway, so with I've got a one inch hole on this table for the drill press. Long ago I checked it out for truth and it's actually pretty darn good. So what I think I'm going to try and do is set that in there. I probably might take these clamps out of the way. Um, so I'll possibly clamp this down here and maybe the other side and uh, we'll do some truth tests best I can these surfaces aren't going to be much good for indicating on but I might be able to do something here or put uh, some parallels in here maybe get something to get a guide as to what's going on so far I can't really see anything all that significant but <laughs> it's one of those things which he's concerned about and I guess it's worth doing a fairly detailed check on it best we can. As I said initially it's, uh, it, 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 this, it may come to nothing but we're going to give it a go. Um, I'll probably get back to it when it's a bit cooler but that ain't going to happen in a hurry <laughs> unfortunately. Just a thought before I quit on this session. This camera is not very stable at all actually. It just tried to fall down. Um, I did notice, this is the first thing that's occurred to me here, not that one would normally bring a compound back all that far, but I wonder if you can see. Oh, I'm making the camera rock now. It's my springy floor transferring movement. Um, the stability this way is poor and the gib screws can't really quite work out what's happening there and if we go forward fully onto the dovetail still float still float there still float and if I take up the gibs too much it just goes tight so this is something that we're going to be looking at I think That'll be the first thing to try and work out. Well, it's a bit late in the same day, but the temperature's dropped a bit. So I'm out here just to follow this up for another minute or three. Um, that uh, 
error that you might have seen when I had this on the drill press table. I think I know what the problem is because I I haven't mic'd up all the used the DTI on all the surfaces for perfect parallelism but I think the main thing we've got to deal with first is uh, Lawrence said that he when he commissioned this originally he had to make a gib plate somewhat in a hurry um, it's a case of okay but uh, it is not dimensionally uniform on thickness it goes from I think without checking it goes from about 130 to 140 145 it's basically it's fat in the middle um, this way not too bad the angle on there is okay it does you won't see much of that because I'm not in very close but um, this is a little bit plus down here anyway it's a bit plus you can see it's been rubbing uh, the gib screw the um, well the gib screws set screws they're okay but I'm going to try and get some uh, socket set screws to use instead for a finer adjustment feel and seeing as I'm always boring you guys with what I plan to do even if I change my mind uh, the only material I've got is this piece and it's a piece of 3 16 by 5 8 and although I've wire brushed it it was pretty corroded but it's the only piece I've got of flat but it's it's nice nice material so we're going to make a new Gibbs gib plate and because it's 5 8 and this nominally this nominally here is uh, I think it's is it half inch I quite forgotten I did check it oh dear I've forgotten now I've got to measure it more accurately it's uh, oh no it's about 4 5 4 60 something Anyway, that's the material. Out of this piece, we'll make the new one, which will be uh, nominally eighth of an inch thick. It's no problem if there's a bit of space to take up. You don't want the gib plate to be over tight because that's why you've got set screws. So the plan on this is over. I mean, what's the length that I need to work with now? This is 9 inch, so we'll say it's going to be about 9 inch. So the plan at the moment is, whilst this is that thickness, we'll put the, uh, we'll put the 30 degree angles top and bottom and get it right for vertical fit and then we will machine both sides I mean not the whole length but you know I'll probably cut off cut this off something like that so we'll machine both sides down to a uniform eighth and that should give us a decent uh, gib plate in order to do the angle I will probably I've been thinking about that I haven't got a vice wide enough to give 9 inch of course so what we'll do for the the bevel we'll call it um, I'll use the tilt vice and some packing both sides was I out of frame then? Oh, maybe um, I'll pack it both sides for rigidity so that we can machine that and get a decent result so there you go I'm getting hot again I don't know when I'm going to pick up on this. I said to Lawrence it'll probably be a bit slow because of this darned heat. Unless I get out here in the morning for a while. Anyway, that's the plan. As I say, I always bore you with my plans, but I might as well keep you up to speed on what we're thinking about. And uh, once we've done the gib plate and got it installed, we'll see how well it runs. 
I can imagine, incidentally, with that effect, unless you tighten the Gibbs so tight that you couldn't traverse, uh, that was always going to be there, and that's not good news if you're machining. So, we'll try and get a little bit done before the temp comes right up. And it's already climbing, so we're trying to just get a little bit of time in here before we get into Sweatsville. Now I've put this uh, tilt vise on, which of course is really a bit damn large for this uh, little old mill. But it should enable me to do the uh, bevel. Uh, I've just been setting this up and it's locked for swivel. So, and it's not actually very critical to be honest, but you know what, it's better to try and get it right. So we've got to get this piece set up in here, there's, there's the old plate. So we've got to get this set up in here, probably with some stiffening packing, um, and then mill a bevel one side and turn it over and do the other. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just the time setting up. We're just getting this rigged up here. Um, I got a sandwich of uh, parallels under there. And uh, setting this up here Pretty well on the on the money. This is side one, so the second side will be a bit more critical. Uh, I'm going to use this little uh, angle indicator to get my approximate angle, which I'll then check with a protractor and try and get it as accurate as we can. Well, as usual, setup takes forever, doesn't it? So we got this dialed in for 30 degrees, uh, we set that up for parallel, I'm just starting to take a 10 hour cut on here. Take a bit more. It's a bit of a long power, so I'm not going to bore you with the whole of that one. <laughs> I've just added a uh, clamp at each end just to pick up the, you can't see the other one, but where the bar there is um, not contained within the clamping pieces, just to firm it up. I'm going to take another 10 thou, I'm not taking big cuts, this is pretty hard material. Um, so this is a very tedious stage. Once we get this bit done on, on, the, on this side, uh, we'll flip it over and set it up critically for the uh, second side. Just finishing what uh, should be the last pass on this side. So there it is, that's uh, I think we're covering the whole, bearing in mind that it's going to be reduced in thickness, 
So that's that side. Now we've got to set up for the other side and get to dimensions set up. Woo, another short days machining coming up, guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's one of those nights when it never really got cool. So the way it's morning, it's getting hot quick. I think we hit 92 or more yesterday. Anyway, I go on about the heat, don't I? Sorry, it gets boring. <laughs> um, all right, um, this is just a catch up, really. What we've done now, we uh, took the piece over to the uh, top slide of the compound, blued it, marked up a reference line there. So, what it will be doing is that's probably, probably, yeah, I don't know, it'll be. I'm just trying to think, looking at that, probably a hundred thou cut, something like that. So I'm going to take it down to the line until the line is just being cut on the line or just below. It's not super critical for the odd thou, as long as we're not plus. And then we'll set about doing the uh, surface, both sides, so there's not going to be much to show you for now. Alrighty, I'll catch you in a bit. I'm just taking a final uh, 5 thou safety cut just to make sure that I've uh, cut through the datum line. The vertical height isn't super tolerance other than not being too high. Uh, that should be there, hopefully. Um, so we'll take that out and clean it up and uh, see how it looks. Alright, now uh, we've got the bevels. I've checked that in the top slide of the compound and uh, it's not above the dovetail. So it's good we've got clearance vertically. The angle looked just slightly off, which is strange because it was set up for 30, but there we are, well, look, that's not hypercritical. So we've got to reduce that now in thickness. We've got to take a sixteenth off that, so we'll see what we can do with it. And clear up this mess. Excuse the fan noise, I've got the AC running. But I should be out of here, I think, soon. <laughs> it's getting silly. Um, I shot myself in the foot, I think. Um, I did the bevel first. I thought it seemed like a good idea, but... In fact, it wasn't such a good idea, because... I tried to start machining this to reduce thickness... on the uh, table. And I could only clamp it at each end, but of course over nine inches plus you could probably guarantee that on one side there was a slight um, plus shall we say in other words the piece was not quite straight by two or three thou and as soon as the cutter started to get away from the clamp it was uh, producing chatter and nasty shit stuff <laughs> excuse me <laughs> what I did forget to mention actually uh, <laughs> which is a sort of confession I don't think it was entirely the fact that it was just clamped to the table. 
uh, I was using much too large a cutter and that was stupid I sh should have used as I do later just a very slightly oversized cutter for the width that I'm machining and the result of the big cutter of course is that the uh, the approaching cutting tooth comes lambing in from one side at fair velocity instead of being at a more acute angle so anyway I think that's why that was such a disaster <laughs> for each side to act as uh, sacrificial However, predictably, you can watch what happens. See? See? The uh, aluminum bites on the top of the bevel and then it lifts. So that's no good. So I think I'm out of options unless I had a mag, um, a mag uh, chuck, which I haven't, as much as I'd like to get one. So we're in a holding pattern at the moment and <laughs> well I guess it's worth showing people's mistakes and screw ups as well as successes isn't it? I should have thought of that. I don't think I've got any, any other option now, not unless I come up with an inspiration. I'm going to try, uh, I have tried, I've taken a couple of 10 power passes. Uh, I can't steady the centre as I'd hoped by pinching it in the jaws. So I may have shot myself in the foot, but what I'm going to do is take another few passes on this side and then flip it over. It seems to be holding pretty solid on there and it's well clamped at the end so I'm going to persevere with that and see how it works out. Uh, if necessary I'll get some more material and start again but uh, I didn't think it through very well did I? <laughs> I don't know what, I thought getting the bevels done first was a good idea Maybe because the material was more rigid when I was cutting, but that wouldn't have mattered, would it? So I'm going to carry on on this and uh, and then flip it over, see if I can finish up with a fairly uniform thickness. Oh, all right, I think we may have won. <coughs> I think my foot wound was probably fairly small, hopefully, <laughs> instead of a full bullet hole. <laughs> uh, sorry, the fan's still going. <coughs> What I decided to do was, having got it set up, and I didn't want to move it again, I was going to flip it, but the other side is not too bad. Uh, so I'll probably just polish that on some 600. I'll probably polish this on 600, although the machining marks are not too, too grim. Uh, that was my... Uh, Oh, you probably know what you can see. I know usually I get in too close. That was my uh, entry point. That was where I stopped each time. So at the moment, it's got a very slight spring in it, which is probably actually was going the right way. Very slight. So that meant when it was clamped, it was held solid, and that was good. Uh, I've got some burrs to clean up from machining, cut these ends off, and uh, hopefully get it positioned with some set screws to uh, get some marks, drill some dimples. Phew. Well, I'm nearly done. <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to hopefully put some new Gibbs set screws in here. Um, Lawrence had to modify this end, which is why it's got a cap screw in it. What I'd like to do, I think I've got some inch ones coming, same as these, but actually it would be wise 
probably to have inch and a quarter, then you can have a lock nut on the outside to keep your adjustment. Anyway, there's the, uh, there's the little devil. I guess we've sort of rescued the situation. It's not perfect, I have to admit, over, I don't know, oh, over how many years I've uh, machined stuff, I've never made a gib plate. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Uh, this, in fact, I've taken down to just over the eighth. As a matter of fact, it could well have been 10 or 15 thou bigger. I really went by the old one. And these angles, the bevel, not absolutely spot on. I must have probably not set quite exactly right. Anyway, we've got... Um, we marked up for the set screws and set countersinks there. I'm hoping I can get point, pointed ones, cone points. I think the ones that I might be getting are a cup point and they're not going to be so good. So these will have to do for now. Anyway, um, I just pop it together. As I say, there's quite a bit of quite a bit of spare space, and oh, I suspect my arm's going to beautifully get in the way. Let's see if we can get out of the way of the nut. All I'm trying to do here is to take up the first setting. and uh, put it on the drill press with that inch spigot and this screw here is a weird one as well so I'm just taking up a rough set so I'm going to put it up on the drill press alright I think hopefully we've uh, heard the worst of the trouble. These are not taken up 100% yet, but there's no no obvious um, traverse, no, what was the word I'm looking for? No obvious, uh, shall we say, wiggle, I can't think of a better word for it, deviation left and right, longitudinally. And uh, it's not been greased up yet. Back here there's a tiny bit which is down to give adjustment. That's a long way back. You wouldn't normally use it quite that far back. taking it forward to the, a more normal operating area like that which is nicely even on the dovetail I'm trying to see if I can feel well there's a fraction there which is I think it's just down to the fact the gib screws are not taken up fully a compromise situation plus it needs grease. That's uh, a bit of a tighten that one. Bit of room for take up there. A little bit on there. Uh, that's a smidgen tight. But that basically is solid. And I think with a bit of patience setting up these uh, gib screws, it's going to be good. And so I've got to grease it up. So anyway, seeing as I'm cooking, <coughs> despite the AC, uh, 
I'm going to call it a wrap there. <laughs> sweat, sweat, sweat. Um, yeah, so I, I thought I'd literally shot myself in the foot earlier with my planning, but I've sort of rescued it. Uh, wouldn't say it was ideal. I'd do it differently if I did another one. And the uh, ideal thing, of course, is a mag chuck and a grinder. But uh, machining it is the second solution. Anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. Next thing, I'm not sure. Got to make a few tea nuts. And oh, the um, acute sharpening system. I'll do another video on that. I opted to get the kit of bits, and I'll go into more detail that uh, about that on the uh, on the next sweaty video. <laughs> All right. If you got this far, thanks for watching.